Hello and welcome to Live from the Lab. This is the show where we talk about different technologies that Brooker has developed to help researchers discover the world around us. Today's topic is about X-ray microscopy. What is an X-ray microscope? Well, what we do is we combine micro CT hardware with specialized software to create a complete imaging solution. And by doing that, we give scientists, in particular materials researchers, the ability to look inside. With a con conventional optical microscope, you're kind of limited to looking at the surface. But much like the picture we see in the background here, with X-ray microscopes, you can actually see beyond the surface. Now specifically, we have some really exciting things to talk about. The brand new CMOS edition, I guess over here, of the uh, 2214 nano tomography solution. So to learn more, we're going to head on over to the table. Good morning, Gear. Hi, John. Great to be here. Yes, thank you for joining us all the way from Belgium. Yeah, it was a long trip, but we made it. But you made it. So, yes, and we have a sunny day out here in Madison. So, uh, you know, hopefully you can yep. get out there later, enjoy some biking yep. and some, right. o some other things like that. Uh, so some really exciting news though last week, and you were actually out at a show. Yeah, right? exactly. We were at the Industrial Com uh, Computer Tomography uh, Conference in Fort Germany. Okay. And actually there indeed we had some great news. We, as John said, we launched the 2214, Skyscan 2214, CMOS edition. And I think that was really a big, is a, is a big step for us, yeah. It really, it really is. I mean, the platform, though, itself, when we talk about yeah. this 2214. Now, yeah. on the show, we, we've talked a lot yeah. about yeah. the bench tops, yeah. these little exactly. machines. Yeah. And they are absolutely yeah. great yeah. for the general materials research. But really, when you yeah. really want to push yeah. the limits, yeah. you get exactly. to the then, big one. Then this is the, the Skyscan 2214, the, the yep. platform. That, that's our high-resolution platform. Yeah. And that's something, indeed, we, we maintain. But what we really changed here is actually on, on the detecting side. Yeah? So all these high resolution cameras, we have completely switched now to scientific CMOS uh, uh, cameras. And that made great impact, not so much on the resolution, that was already very good, but the image quality that we okay. achieve. Okay. And, uh, that, yeah. and so now I think that we've heard this before though, uh, mm -hmm. several months ago actually, that, we were talking about a 1272, and it yeah, also had exactly. a CMOS. Is that exactly. a similar transition? It is a similar transition indeed, yeah. But see, okay. the, difference, the difference is the, the Skyscan 20, uh, 1272, that's a single detector. Whereas here on Skyscan 2214, we have in total four detectors. So wow. one is a flat panel, wow. yep. a big flat panel to really cover a large field of view, get very quick scans, but then you have up to three Mm -hmm. High resolution cameras that really helps you to balance between resol uh, resolution and 3D field of view. So basically, w the volume that you see inside your sample, and that's relevant. Uh, yeah. And that is also that is one of the big improvements with with the, with the, the CMOS cameras. This field of view has become even even larger. So it's not just the cameras that have increased in size up to uh, something like 70% in some cases, but it's really the 3D volume inside the object. Yeah. And that is relevant because it gives you a statistically more representative image of what you're looking at. That's right. You don't need to look so much around in your sample because you see it already, a large volume with a, a, a native resolution. Yeah. One of the analogies I actually heard recently uh, to talk about these different cameras is, well, it, it's kind of like cell phones. So it, mm -hmm. like how nowadays you have multiple cameras mm -hmm. and multiple yeah. resolutions, yeah. Uh, you have multiple yeah. kind of ideal situations. Yeah. You know, use the panoramic exactly. one, use the wide one. Yeah. So it's really, really a, a nice addition. Yeah. Yeah. Now the platform itself though, like, and this is actually some of it's shared mm -hmm. with the 1272, it has a lot of features to help increase that resolution or take advantage of the resolution, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yeah. So yeah. you have to start with a really stable base. Yeah. That is here indeed inside a system because we're really looking here at submicron levels. And of course, any exterior vibrations, that's something you want to completely eliminate. So inside the whole system, the whole setup, the X-ray source, the rotation stage, the different detectors are all on a granite uh, block, basically, okay. that is floating on air. And then in addition, the rotation stage where you, where you, where you mount the object that you, that, that you want to investigate, also that one is floating on air. So it's completely decoupled from, from the outside. And you can really see it uh, when, when the system is open, you can just push that granite block and you will see how mm -hmm. it levels out and, and, and completely removes the, uh, the vibrations. And that's of course a prerequisite for getting down to this type of, of, of high resolution level. Yeah? 
But of course, it's not just, let's say, eliminating any sure. type of vibrations. You also need the other components in your system capable of going to that resolution. And, and the first thing is you need an X-ray source. Traditional yeah. micro uh, CT systems, they have spot sizes on the order of, at best, a couple of microns. Huh? And, and okay. if you go to the high KV systems, that is, that is, that is even much larger focal spot sizes. And that ultimately limits the, the resolution that you can achieve. And for example, in Skyscan 2214, we do use an, a, a transmission X-ray source where you can get down to focal spot sizes of better than 500 nanometer. We see sometimes even 400 nanometer. Yeah? Yeah. And coupled that with high resolution cameras, so that, that have small pixels, also optimized scintillators, there you really then go to also three-dimensional resolutions on that 500 nanometer level. So, um, now when you say the resolution, I know that's one of yep. these points of confusion sometimes because, you know, we'll see numbers like, oh, this mm -hmm. detector 60 nanometers yep. resolution, but yep. then you were saying yep. like 300 to 400. Yep. Why is yep. it that we have that difference yep. Yep. in the numbers? So, what, what you mentioned is on, on the one hand is the, the, the uh, voxel size or pixel size, basically. Mm -hmm. And that is just the coming from the geometry. Uh, and in, in, in format, let's say with micro CT systems, the resolution is mostly defined just by the detector. Yeah. But nowadays, well, why are we capable to go to such small focal spot sizes? Actually, it's also the, 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 uh, the, the X-ray source that is becoming the dominant factor. And that ultimately defines what level of resolution you can achieve. The 60 nanometer basically is like a grid that you pull up over your sample. Yeah. Uh, that's a 3D grid, basically. Okay. But what you ultimately can, can, can identify or, or the features that you can, can distinguish is then dominated or yeah, defined by mm -hmm. the X-ray source. Okay. So we don't, yeah, because we really, you want to be able to see the shape of things, yeah, right? Absolutely. You don't just want to see presence absolutely. or absence. And that, that's why, why you need, indeed, sufficient voxels to, yeah. de to really determine very precisely the, the, the shape of, of a feature. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would just have a coarse image. In the end, what, what, we, what, we, what we get is a cloud of voxels. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the finer this pitch is, the better uh, shapes are, are defined. So now, since we're talking about the source, one thing yeah. I'd like to, to bring up would be safety. Uh, because, you know, we are working with x-rays. Yeah. It is Absolutely. radiation. It and can it, be it's, dangerous. it's high energy radiation. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, in in uh, Skyscan 2214, we can go up to uh, 160. Wow. Uh, KV, yeah? so that's okay. that's pretty pretty high energy resolution. Uh, is that uh, why this thing range. is so heavy? That is indeed the <laughs> reason why you need a lot of lat around. Yeah. yeah? So the, the yeah. so you have the the the, the exterior uh, mm -hmm. cabinet, but inside it's completely um, there is a completely safety cabinet. So that that is completely with lat uh, at, at some positions, even even uh, yeah. extra lat. And basically, one of our tests, one of the tests that we do in our, in, our, in our test field before a system is shipped is really measure the external radiation. Yeah. And we do that not just at, at a few centimeters like the norms actually ask, yeah. but we really put our detecting, uh, detecting detectors at the surface of the instrument. And there we are far below any norms. So that in, yeah. in that respect, there is, yeah, that, that's, that's not dangerous to systems. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, with some of our systems actually yeah. at Brooker, the, the, the thing I like to joke is that you, you're almost getting less radiation if you turn the source off and everything, and then you climb yeah. the cabinet because the radiation coming from cosmic sometimes yeah. is higher. Yeah. Um, now, one thing that concerned me a little bit, though, mm -hmm. when I was looking at it is the bench tops, now we have these, it's called a sealed source, right? Yeah, so you don't correct. do anything to yeah. it, it works. But with the big one, to really optimize that experiment, we mm -hmm. have the ability to change filaments. And so they call Absolutely. this an open source. Yeah. Uh, Does that mean that there's more danger, though, for no. exposure or no, things no, like not that? not at all. Uh, because to get access to the source, first of all, you need to switch off the system completely. Okay. Yeah. Then open, open the cabinet, and then you get access to the X-ray source. And you can open this X-ray source and indeed uh, switch filaments. Huh? So we have two types of filaments in, in, in the, uh, in, for this type of X-ray source. That's on the one hand, is as the lanthanum hexaboride. Um, you know that, that these are filaments also used in electron microscopy in the end. Huh? Uh, and with that one, you can really go down to these focal spot sizes mm -hmm. uh, below 500 nanometers. Huh? And then on the other end, you have tungsten filaments yeah? that also already can go to something like 700, 800 nanometer yeah. uh, fo uh, focal spot size. So it's slightly worse, but you can use these really over the complete 
energy range up to yeah. 160 uh, kV. And typically at these, these higher kVs, you typically also have larger spot sizes because you're not interested in micron or uh, micron sized mm -hmm. features. Huh? And, and it's a great way to renew your system mm -hmm. too. Rather yeah, than having to absolutely. go and replace all source, absolutely. you just it, change it, the filament. You just, and that's, and some, that's as simple that any operator, any user can, can switch these filaments. And that just means one the filament, of course, they have a limited lifetime, but you can swap them and you can continue working. Yeah. You don't need to, to wait when, when, for example, a seal tube needs to be replaced. That's something a service technician only can do. Yeah. So you need to wait until somebody comes, then the whole system needs to be calibrated. Yep. That, yep. That's a lot of, of time, whereas with the filaments, it's just only a short interruption, basically. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, there's a video, if you check out, go to our website for the 2214, there's a video there where you can actually see how to change a filament. And it really is that easy. We weren't, you know, That's, making it look simple. No, it really no, no, absolutely is that not. easy. That is, that is, that is every, every user can do this. So let's maybe, let's change gears now. Let's really talk about that new thing. So we were mm -hmm. saying detectors. Yeah. So CMOS, and that is big news. I have to say yeah. that as, as yeah. kind of the, uh, the guy standing back from this, mm -hmm. the pictures to me, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe to be a bit more precise, these are CMOS you know also from, from consumer electronics. Yeah, right? But yeah. what we are using is, is really scientific CMOS detectors because these are actually sensors that are optimized for really, really low noise. Right? Okay. That's something in the past where CCD cameras in the past were still had their niche um, for the low noise. Take for example in astron uh, yeah. astronomy in the, uh, in the past, these, these, these um, cameras that were used there. But nowadays, Scientific CMOS detectors have improved so much, and there are all the other advantages. Yeah, with 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 all, with all the individual electronics on each pixel, yeah. you can cover indeed these these different dynamic ranges. When you, for example, high dense material in a, in in a, in a low dense matrix, the images with 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 CMOS cameras indeed are, are greatly improved, and, and that's something indeed. Have a look at our website. Yeah, uh, that that really demonstrates the case. Yeah. Yeah, and with that noise, mm -hmm. it is really amazing the detail you yeah. pull out from the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way I like to think about it, it's, it, you know, everybody's familiar with the TV technology we have nowadays. Yeah. And so for a very long time, there was the development of the, uh, the, the LCD type, right, mm -hmm. where you have big white Correct. screen in the background, yeah. then you're blocking the light. Yeah. And you always yeah. get that little bit leaking through. It's not yeah. perfect black. Yeah. But then OLEDs, man, you exactly. get that it is, it absolute is background. Black, black, yeah. And it yeah. is like these mm -hmm. are the OLEDs yeah. of detectors. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it is it is a, a major step in the. And yeah. so that so the dynamic range, mm -hmm. I think, contributes so much to the quality. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Like you had said. Now beyond that, though, mm -hmm. it's not just about the quality; it's the nope. size of the. Images, it is the size. Right? Yeah, exactly. The, so the sensors in, in, in for for one of cameras is up to seventy percent larger than the previous generation of cameras yeah. that that we're using, and and consequently also then what you see inside the object is is is, is even larger. Yeah, and because there you have a three D a three D volume. Yeah, so that that is that is a big improvement, and that yeah. helps you to get a larger field of view. Helps you also always to get a statistically relevant image of of, of uh, your object inside. That's one thing. On the other hand, also you can scan faster. Yeah, but because to cover that same range with a smaller camera, you would need to stitch the, uh, yeah. several uh, uh, images together. And, and that makes it really, really, uh, it's not just image quality, but also the speed of scanning, the, the, the efficiency is, is, is definitely a step forward. Yeah, yeah and it's really amazing because you get the context. I mean, let's yeah. say that you had something like an apple, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. one could say, yeah, I'm going to zoom really in, just look at a yeah. seed, but you get so oh, much yeah. more if yeah, you could exactly. see the matrix. Or, already, you, for, uh, with, with the larger cameras, you get a great overview of, 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 the complete, of the complete apple and already see inside the mm -hmm. really fine structure, but then switching to a higher resolution camera, and that's something you just do at the push of a button. Yeah. Yeah? That's yeah. also important to realize. Uh, these four cameras that we have in our system, you just switch by the literally by pushing a button and everything is done automatically. So you're really going to use this and not, not staying with some compromised setup yeah. uh, basically. But then indeed you switch to a higher resolution camera and then all of a sudden you see this internal kernel with, with the seeds and, and even some, some, some tissue around there with, with, with great detail. That, that is amazing actually. It is, it is. And uh, you know, if, if you can't see the rest of it, you don't yeah. know. You got the apple, you got the orange, who knows? Yeah. It's just a seed, right? Yeah. So, um, and then the last thing, though, is mm -hmm. I've heard that these things actually can, like the, the integration, everything, it's, a, yeah. it's faster, right? So, so in the end, these machines are taking data quicker yeah, than ever. Quicker before. than ever, yeah. 
Uh, exactly, so. yeah. So the, the efficiency, the way we implement the detectors, the overhead is significantly mm -hmm. reduced. That, that all adds up in combination with then the, the larger format cameras uh, to, to really accelerate uh, scanning, basically. Yeah. And when you don't have to deal with the noise, then you don't have yeah. to worry about those yeah. long collection exactly. times to try to yeah. normalize exactly. that out. Yeah. So. So I think it is time to actually mm -hmm. see this in action. We actually have our colleague Stefan LaRue. Stefan, yeah. So he, uh, he has actually gone and put together a really, really nice uh, example of how the CMOS technology will work. So we're going to head over to the lab. Hi, and welcome to the lab. Today, we will be having a look at the SkyScan 2214. We've seen this machine in the past, but today we will be looking at our latest edition, the SkyScan 2214 CMOS edition. The idea today is to show you a bit about what different samples you can scan, and especially looking at the different camera configurations we have, because in this system, we can load up to four different cameras. So the camera setup in this machine has been updated from the previous technology to the new CMOS technology. And we will be exploring some of these capabilities today, specifically looking at a common sample. So the sample we have over here is a common toothpick. So we have a little container, plastic container, which is very, very nice because it is lower density than the material we're trying to scan. So it's much easier to, to mount this sample and it will not interfere with our scan at all. So for example, we have a toothpick we can insert it into our container, and now we can do a couple of different experiments with the sample. So next, let's load it in the machine and see what we can see. Great, the sample's loaded, let's go to the PC and see what we can do. Okay, now that our, that our sample is loaded up into the machine, it's time to set up our scan. And one of the great things about the SkyScan 2214 CMOS edition is it's very user-friendly control user interface. So let's have a look at that. So what you'll see here is that all the controls you require are easily accessible. Down here, we have our resolution or magnification, which we can adjust. Next to that, we can also select the sample height. But what's great about this is also it has different cameras that we can use. So first of all, by the click of a button, you can switch between each of the individual cameras. And this is very handy. Depending on what type of feature you would like to look for in your sample, you can select a different camera which has a different magnification. By leaving your sample in exactly the same position, you can switch to a different, so different camera position and it will zoom into the features of interest you like, would like to see. For example, we have a container full of toothpicks, so we can decide either to have a large field of view, looking at all the toothpicks in a single scan, or by leaving our sample in the exact same position, you can switch to a higher magnification camera, and you can zoom into individual toothpick, and now you can extract the finest detail without ever having to touch your sample, which is one of the major advantages of having the multi-camera setup in the SkyScan 2014. So let's have a look at the data set. Now that our view is live, we can decide how we would like to move the sample closer or further away. So for example, at the moment we have our sample loaded up and we're scanning only a, a small portion of the sample. For example, we could move it a bit closer to zoom in and spread the entire sample over our camera field of view. So let's move the sample a bit closer. And we can start to zoom in to the object. As easy as that. So to improve our resolution a bit more, we can leave the sample in this position and we can switch to a different camera, for example. And go from here and let's go to the next zoom mode. And it's as easy as that. With a single click of a button, you can move to your next camera position. No additional calibration required. The next step will be to look at the individual toothpick inside one of the containers. 
Now that we have zoomed into our sample, we can now capture this full data set. And when the scan is finished, we'll have a look at the results. Okay, so our reconstructions are finished. Now we can have a look at the data. So the first data set we'll be looking at is a scan with the flat panel detector in the SkyScan 2214. And here on the left-hand side, we can get an idea of, we get a big, nice overview of the sample in its entirety. And when we look at the data set on the right-hand side, we can see we are currently using our software called a data viewer. So data viewer is a software package which allows us to take orthogonal XYZ slices through the sample, but we'll be focusing more on the horizontal cross section through the data set. This corresponds to this red line we see on the left hand side over here. So if we zoom in, we can start to see that at this resolution or this magnification, we can get a nice overview of how many toothpicks are currently in this container. So it makes it easier for us, for example, to count how many toothpicks are present. But at here we can see some of the small details on the inside that could be present, but we don't have enough detail about those individual features. So the nice thing about the system is that you can swap to a different camera and this camera will then magnify these features as you would zoom, zoom into the features. So here we have a scan performed with the CMOS 3 camera. And now we can still see a nice overview of the data set. As you can see to the left hand side over here, which is we zoomed into a little area to the top. And now we can start to see in the more clearly the individual pores and channels inside each of these toothpicks. But of course, with a multiple camera setup, we can zoom in even more. So when we go into looking at CMOS number two, we are now zoomed into the tips of these toothpicks and now we start to see all the small details inside these, got these toothpicks all with still within a single field of view. We can also see some high density particles in here and we also see some of these high density layers on the inside. But the nice thing about this, the system is that you can use these cameras to zoom into individual features inside a sample like this. So for example, in in the last example, we zoomed into a single toothpick in the center of this container. And now we can start to see all the very, very small details on the inside. We can see the individual little pores or channels in between the larger pores, and you can see some connections between the, these channels inside the toothpick. And as you saw before in the previous scan, we saw some higher density layers. We can enhance these layers with some additional algorithms we have. For example, we applied what we call the phase retrieval algorithm to this data set, which allows us to extract different density phases from a data set. And by doing this, we can now, for example, see with the phase retrieved data set that we see these different density layers on the inside. And also we start to see these individual details a bit clearer. So that gives us a bit of an overview of the different cameras and the different scanning modes we can apply to samples. If you want to get more information about the system, please let us know. Thank you. So welcome back to the studio, and we are now going to answer some of your questions that have come in. Uh, if you have anything on your mind, go ahead. Right now, over in YouTube, just uh, type them into the chat, and we will get to them. Otherwise, you can always email your questions to live.events at broker.com, and we will get back to you. So it looks like we had a few questions that mm -hmm. had come in before. Hi. And the first one is from Tom. And that question is, what is the difference between an XRM and a micro CT? Oh, that's a good question, Tom. Uh, <laughs> actually, XRAM says what it's doing. It's the technology, it is actually the solution that, we, that has provided. It is X-ray, we use X-rays to image an object, X-ray imaging. Whereas micro CT, microcomputer tomography, that's just a technology that's being used. Huh? Yep, so we like to say, like Geert had yeah. just said, MCT, that's your tech. 
Uh, exactly. XRM, that's the imaging you have, solution. You have optical microscopy, you use light. You have electron microscopy, mm -hmm. you, use, you use electrons. Uh, AFN, atomic force microscopy, where you tap uh, and then get, and, and you, you visualize, you image, and, and, that's, and we use X-rays yeah. to probe the object. Now, in terms of the software we're using, though, mm -hmm. uh, one yeah. thing that's kind of unique about the broker solutions is it's, it's developed inside, right? Yeah, and it's the same for all the systems as well. Huh? So whether you're operating a, a benchtop system or the 2214, is exactly the same, the same, the same base software. Of course, when it's in 2014, you have some more options, but the workflow is exactly the same, and that makes it really easy and convenient to switch from 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 one to the other. And what's nice about that too is when you're doing things like the reconstruction, mm -hmm. the analysis, you can take advantage of certain yeah. higher end features like advanced scanning modes. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I know there's one called uh, helical scanning. Yeah. And that, yep. though, you can do it one of two ways, right? You can analyze that yep. data in kind of a blunt force or mm -hmm. the right way. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, yeah. The right way is a lot more computational. It's computational uh, yeah. heavier. Right? You need really exact reconstruction algorithms to really get, when, when, uh, with helical scanning or spiral scanning, like they also, also say, what you basically do, you rotate and translate. Normally you rotate on only the object, but now you rotate and you translate. And it's particularly beneficial in, when you have flat features plane of features in, in, uh, that are perpendicular to the rotation axis. Because then you get otherwise these, these cone beam artifacts, and because you miss information, you get streak artifacts. And by just translating, you really get rid of them when you use also the, 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 the exact re reconstruction algorithms. You can also, there, there do exist some, some approximate reconstruction algorithms that already help, but, but you don't get completely rid of, rid of these, these artifacts. So, yeah, so you have access to the helical scanning here. Yeah. We also have the uh, heart plus, the heart high plus. aspect ratio scanning. When you need, a, scanning. Uh, need a, a flat object, yeah. uh, and then indeed you optimize the projection images. So you're going to make more projection images along uh, at, at the, the, the short side of, of, of the, mm -hmm. the instrument. That you need a smaller rotation step to capture enough information, whereas at the long side of, 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 the, of the object, that you simply need less uh, projection images. So that's why, in that case, normally you rotate at a fixed rotation step. But in case when you're scanning a high aspect ratio um, object, indeed, then you use a, we use an, a variable uh, rotation step to really optimize okay. the scanning. You could, of course, scan the whole object with a very small um, uh, rotation step, but that takes simply longer and you don't yeah. benefit from anything yeah. more. Yeah, and you can and you can even move the detector closer. Yeah, you can move it farther. Yeah, I th this one even you can move it offset, right? Exactly. So the 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 uh, lot, uh, the, the high resolution cameras, indeed, you can offset them so to extend to the even the field of view. You can move them closer to get a also again a larger field of view. Scan faster because you're close to the object yeah. when you don't need the highest resolution. To improve resolution, you just simply put them, put them at a, at a, further away from the sample and increase the magnification. Yeah. yeah. So the key is always the right tool for the right job used in the yeah. right way. Yeah. Those, are, those are the keys. So we have some questions here, uh, actually that came in from Heidi. And uh, the first one, I mm -hmm. am actually gonna have you, because I think it is in either German or in. Let me check. Yeah. Okay, the, the question is actually, how can you, can you ensure that the pixel size is correct? Indeed, you need to calibrate the system, and that's in the, the, the done with with, uh, with uh, multi-ball phantoms uh, that, that we use to really calibrate the system. Indeed, to have, make sure that when you position a, a an object at a certain uh, at a certain source um, object distance, that then indeed the pixel size or voxel size is also correct. Yeah, that is that is calibrated, but that's done when the system is being installed. That's verified, and then you're and running. Yeah, it is uh, something, you know, we all do kind of get caught up sometimes in the images. I mean, you yep. look, you walk in, yep. you throw your sample in the first time, you see these beautiful mm -hmm. images. Fact is, this is very quantitative, yep. Yep. right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And, and there's a software, actually, it's called uh, CTM mm -hmm. that's included with the machine. Yep. And uh, you can do things yep. like... It's, it's image analysis. Yeah. Huh? So if, if you have a porous sample that can be... An, an, Many samples, of course, not just rocks. You have foams. Uh, you have in food. You have everywhere these structures. You can really, and that's I think unique also about uh, for for X-ray microscopy. You can determine the open porosity, but also the closed porosity. Get that ratio. Get the distribution. So you get really 
you, you basically, each and every pore inside your 3D volume is evaluated. You get information about the shape of, of, the, of that pore. So that, that's great. Another, another very uh, nice example uh, is, is, is fibers. I mean, you have uh, composite materials, be it glass fiber composites or, or carbon fiber com uh, composites, can really determine the orientation, not only of the fiber bundles, but even of the individual fibers. And, and that, that is something that, that's, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, and there's some great examples of that on yeah. the website. So if you go to that Skyscan 2214 website, yeah. uh, there's some really, yeah. really nice pictures. Um, in fact, you can even color code things. So like yeah. you have the thickness according, of something. According to the orientation yeah. for, for, for a pore size distribution, you can also color code according to the, to the size of the, of the object. And that yeah. gives immediately a visual impression of, for example, where are these pores? Are they located? For example, if you're inspecting an object, a pore shouldn't be too large, so you can set some tolerances. You can also verify whether it's not at positions where it may be at some point then a uh, of fail failure of an object. Okay. Huh? So uh, you can overlay it with the image, you can fly through, you can, can, can cut away, and, and, and really that gives, it's, it's unique basically. Huh? You, you really get a 3D view with quantitative information. I, I don't know any other technique that can do that. That's right, Yeah, and, and one thing to note is that um, if anybody out there is interested in these things, we have systems all over the world. I yeah. mean, we have, we, we have the system in here in Madison, we also have it in Pumpik, Belgium. Yeah. Uh, where so else do we have uh, labs here? So we have also application labs in, in Yokohama in Japan, mm -hmm. for example, to equip uh, application lab in Beijing, China. So these are the major application labs we have for the so if anybody is interested in seeing what this does in your stuff, you can either come visit us. Yeah. We love that when you come visit. Or we can even schedule a, uh, a demo. Yeah. They can come on out, we got cameras, and we can shoot that uh, and really have yeah. it. Now, we have another question that came mm -hmm. in now, and this one is from uh, Bobby Hav, and it is how to reduce stray signals. Stray signals, so, uh, what do you mean by stray signals? I'm mm -hmm. guessing that Kind of like maybe artifacts, mm. and you know maybe yeah. if we get yeah. other, uh, you know, other things okay. in the background. Yeah, that, that 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 that's something we observe. For example, with with the CMOS cameras, you have much less of these beam hardening artifacts. Mm -hmm. So, a very nice example that that we recently had. Uh, we had actually a rubber, and there was some high density inclusions. And and in the past with CCD cameras, indeed, you, you often saw them at these high density particles, these, these so-called beam hardening artifacts, these, 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 what, you, what you call probably stray artifacts. And we scanned the sa exactly the same object with, with, the, with, the, with the CMOS cameras, and they were completely gone. That, that, what, that was amazing. So, it, it, yeah, it is absolutely amazing, the cleanliness mm. of the images. Uh, like you were saying, it, with this high density, low density, yep. works so yep. much better. Yep. Yep. But then again, the background. The fact you have none of that sensor mm -hmm. noise. You yep. will see things that you have never seen before. Actually, he clarified in mapping. So how to reduce the stray signals in mapping. I'm, I, I'm guessing that it's, you know, it's, it's like we were saying. I mean, mm -hmm. with, with this tack, you are going to do pre, uh, kind of cone beam. So yep. you put the exactly. sample, you turn it, you mm -hmm. see the whole thing. If you have a clean background, yep. good detectors. You should yep. not have a lot of odd nope. things. So another question that came in from uh, Bonnie is, why do you have so many detectors? Why do you need four? Yeah. <laughs> well, a detector is always a design choice. You have many different parameters. You have the pixel size of a detector, you have the scintillator thickness of, of, a, of a detector, and that is some, something you want to optimize. You have, for example, low-dense material, with very tiny features. Take, for example, a carbon fiber composite. Yeah. Then you rather have a camera with very small pixels and also a thin scintillator just to make sure that you have the highest possible resolution. But on, on the other hand, when you have a more dense sample where only just a few X-rays are, 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 let's say, going through the sample, yeah, so we have a, a low, low um, um, level of, of uh, photons arriving at a detector. You rather want to have larger pixels, thicker scintillate, convert the X-rays into optical light that is then detected by the sensor. So the sensitivity is then much, much higher. And, and this is something, depending on the sample, depending on the features you're looking at, you can play with and you can really optimize uh, for your particular 
object and analytical request with different cameras. And the fact that you can really seamlessly switch uh, between different cameras makes this really a practical, a practical uh, solution. You're not going to scan compromise in a way with maybe two large pixels so you don't see, you don't achieve sufficient resolution in the sample to see the features. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, looking at the examples that Stefan had put up there, they were really yeah, amazing. Yeah, absolutely, that, that was that nicely balance. demonstrated uh, with, 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 with the toothpicks. So with, with the different cameras, the balance that you make between the field of view and the resolution. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have another question that's somewhat related, um, that it, this seems like a really great machine and a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. But with all those settings, mm -hmm. switching detectors, it seems hard to do. Oh, uh, I think we, we touched <laughs> on, uh, on this our, our, uh, before. Actually, the, the, the basic software is exactly the same as our, as our, as our benchmark system. Isn't it? So that is, that is really easy. And in the end, the fact that it's just a single button to switch between cameras, that is, that is something you need. You don't need to, to, have, uh, to be an expert to do that. Uh, that. That is really easy. Plus the workflows that are in the, so in the software guide you through. But I would say every user after short training, is, is, is proficient to use even a 20, this guy's been 20 for nano CP system. I think for development, yeah. that is one of the hardest things. It is. It is to make it, is. it easy yeah. to use, yeah. but yeah. at yeah. the same yeah. time have depth. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right? And, and it, that's yeah. what we have. Yeah. It doesn't help, let's say, to have a very efficient system that's so complicated that nobody is going to really use the that's advanced right. features. Right? That then yeah. you end up again with this compromised solution. I think. The way that's solved, changing these different effects, for example, um, the filter the settings uh, that, that is guided to the, it is the extreme. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, it, it's kind of neat. You can throw any sample up there. You just uh, tell it, hey, pick the right filter. We'll go yeah. in, try filters, yeah. try the different kilovolts, yeah. really optimize things for you, yeah. and, uh, and, and it goes from there. So it's kind of like, you know, Really simple to start, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's never going to limit you in terms of the depth of what you can achieve. So, uh, we have one more question that had come in before, and this one is from Susan, and that is, I have heard that geomet geometric magnification is useful only for tiny little samples. Is that the case? Well, geometric magnification is at the basis of, 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 of imaging, you know, uh, any type of, of imaging, basically. What, um, but still, you can you also image. I think we had the example just uh, in, in our previous talk uh, where we gave this, this example with, 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 with the apple. Uh? Yeah. So you have the big apple, and with the large cameras, indeed, you get an overview, not the highest resolution, but you get a good overview and you see the, you see the features. And then you switch to these high resolution cameras uh, and increase the magnification. And even for, the, for, for an apple, which is typically on the order of something like 60 millimeter in diameter, you can really see with great detail these, the, the, the seeds inside. Yeah, if you really want to push no. the resolution on something, nobody is ever going to say, no, no matter the no. technique, you get that sample as close to the source yeah, as you absolutely. can. Absolutely, yeah. But that's having access to the detectors and being able to change detector mm. distance, sample distance, you can put pretty yeah. big things yeah. in here absolutely. and still get yeah. very, very good resolution. Yeah. But to really so. squeeze it to the max indeed, you will are going to, do, to optimize your, uh, your sample shape. Yeah, 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 I mean, we do tests on, yeah. um, on some of these, like, I call them standard, they're kind of standard, so there's a 3D yeah, one, and then there's also, ones, uh, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there, there's one that's a flat microscopy one, you yeah. just kind of put it in there and then see yeah. what the image is. Yeah. That's a flat little one, everybody does it the same way, mm -hmm. you put yeah. that right up exactly. to the source. Um, but then you get that true spatial resolution mm -hmm. by yeah. really measuring a sample. Yeah. And that's neat that we can really get submicron. Yeah. You know, exactly. I think we say what five, five hundred. We can achieve up to five hundred because yeah. ultimately it is defined by the focal spot size in this case. Yeah. And uh, see even cases where you go direction four hundred nanometers. So that's yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a game sometimes yeah. in the app lab, yeah. especially you get the fresh filament in there, a lab yeah. six in there, and yeah. turn the power down. Really get it set right, mm -hmm. and you can get amazing resolution with these machines. So with that, uh, we've come to the end of our episode. I'd like to thank you, Gear, for yeah, joining us thanks today. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. And until next time, everybody out there, keep your signal high and your background low.